Hi there, welcome to an edition of Witchfinders Gaming Vault and today I'm going to be looking at a PS1 game and that game is RC Stunt Copter. So as always let's begin by looking at the fact file for the game. RC Stunt Copter was released in 1999 in Europe, it's published by Interplay and it was developed by Shiny Entertainment. The price I paid for the game was just £1 and if you want to pick up a copy off eBay you can get it for about £3 to £6 at the moment. So this is the last of 20 games that I picked out of my collection when I restarted this series earlier this year and at the end of this video I'm going to pick another 20 games and pick one of those at random as I've been doing at the end of every video. But first let's take a look at RC Stunt Copter. Here we have the packaging for the game then, as you can see pretty typical PS1 packaging. Uh, here's the front cover, it says Speed, Fun, Stunts and Total Radio Control RC Stunt Copter and a picture of one of the copters on the front there as well. RC obviously stands for radio control, I haven't said that so far but now I have. Uh, so the spine, bog standard PS1 spine, let's move on. And on the back cover as you can see it says RC Stunt Copter, all the fun and excitement of flying a real world remote control helicopter. Feels like the real thing, colourful commentary, take up the challenge and master four copters from rookie to ace. 25 challenging levels with 9 different games, training, solemn, shooting, stunt, hovering, landing, target, free flight and 2 player. Uh, it makes analog controller fly, 6 degrees of flying freedom, whatever that means. The more stunts you perform the more points you get, the cooler you are and 2 player games let you beat your opponent hands down. And there's a few screenshots there as you can see, uh, as you'd expect it's a helicopter flying around. Uh, in various environments. There's a house there, that seems dangerous. Uh, and a few logos on the back there, Interplay, uh, various information as it said it's one or two player, uses a memory card and the analog controller which obviously not all PS1 games did. Uh, it was the early days of the analog controllers on the PS1. So there you go, that's the back cover. Let's take a look at the instructions now. Quick look at the disc there, as you can see not much different to the front cover of the game so I'm not going to dwell on that too much. I'll be popping that into the PS1 in a moment. Let's move on to the instructions and uh, obviously you've got things like the contents. They're quite meaty these instructions, quite thick so I'm just going to skim through them. You've got information about the setting up and memory cards and controllers. It then moves on to the introduction to the game and one thing you will see in this manual is there's quite a lot of supposed humour in it. The first thing it goes on to say is that they want to make something perfectly clear, you'll never beat this game. It's important enough to be repeated, you'll never beat this game. It's basically saying that you can think that you can beat games and why the heck would you play a game you can't win. It goes on to tell you that basically there's no perfect score to be got in any of the game modes so you can do uh, tricks or you can do fast timings and that won't be enough, there'll always be room for improvement. It's quite a comprehensive manual as I've said so I'm basically just going to say uh, quickly skip through this and uh, not dwell on it too much. But uh, the startup information, this is where the supposed humour comes in. So it begins with evolve into a society based bipedal creature with opposable thumbs, invent electricity, buy a PlayStation, go see a play or visit a gallery because it's really important to support the arts. On and on it goes, I'm not going to go into all this stuff. Order a pizza to give you something to eat for the next several hours that you'll be playing the game. Uh, basically, yeah, it's trying to be funny but it's not that funny. It then moves on to give you an overview of the controls. There's three different ways to control the helicopter. The first is using a controller that's not analog. The second is to use an analog controller. And the third, it says to use telekinesis. If you carry Yoda or Yuri Geller, this is the way to go. Again, it's trying to be funny. It's not that funny. Uh, it then goes on to various things talking about the different aspects of flying a helicopter, rotor blades, collective or throttle, rudder or tail rotor, cyclic or banking, rotation, pitch, yaw and roll. Lots of information that you don't really need to play the game I don't think. Uh, it then goes on to tell you about other things like hovering and crashing, uh, game modes which we'll get into when the game loads so let's not dwell on those too much. Options, different kinds of helicopters you can fly, uh, flying tips, as I said there's lots of information in here, scoring for landing, hovering, shooting, stunt scoring and stunt modifier bonuses, yeah lots of info again uh, and then finally the credits which is a big list of people who made the game, uh, a bit of technical support info, more credits and I think that's it, no there's still more and that's just the warranty and uh, Interplay's World Wide Website. Remember when people used to use the term World Wide Web? Well, this is that era, folks. So there you go. Very comprehensive instruction manual, which I can't be bothered to read through in any detail. So let's load the game up now and see how it plays. Okay, so the game's loading up with a number of splash screens, if you like, for the different people involved with it. 
and uh, this one's for shiny entertainment um, there you go it's a big shiny logo but we're not done because there's more it's also big grub assume that's a programming team that was involved with it but we're still not done because there's also a screen for Tommy Talarico Studios who did the music or the audio and then finally the game's loading up with a bunch of copyright information the loading times are not good on this game to say the least although to be honest probably a lot of PlayStation 1 games didn't have good loading times anyway I suspect at this point the CD-ROM drives were not super fast so fair enough so yeah you're presented with the title screen pretty simple stuff you've just got the logo for the game uh, some music in the background and the option to either load a game or start a new one well I've actually already played this a bit and saved some of my progress so we can get through it quicker when I'm doing this review so I'm gonna load a game and here we go and what it does is load you to exactly the point that you saved it at so uh, as you can see from this I've completed all the training stuff but I'll just go back to the main menu uh, so show you this uh, here's the main menu um, so you've got training you've got one player game two player competition free flight and options we'll take a look at the options just to say that uh, the reason I've done all the training missions if you like already is because the one player game is locked until you do that so uh, we'll have a little look at the training but not too much but let's have a look at the options first so you can see you've got the option to save or load to a memory card it doesn't auto save I found that to my peril when I played through the training stuff and then switch the PS1 off and then found that it hadn't saved anything so you do have to save manually you've also got control options uh, of uh, volume vibration and analog uh, I'm just gonna leave all that exactly as it's actually analog what have we got there analog sensitivity um, let's move that up a little bit because I found the sensitivity of the analog sticks to be not great so let's put that at about 70 see if that makes any difference so we'll do that and finally if we go back there's also a credits option which as you can see has got a cow on it uh, there's a, a movie that's locked I imagine you have to unlock that by doing something within the game uh, and for the credits well it just rolls quite slowly you can see the project lead there Charlie Bloomer some coders you get the idea we're not going to look through all those so let's go back and as I said I'm going to start with the training missions uh, just to show you a few of them I've already done them all so I'm just going to show a couple of them. So we'll start with the, the very beginning. It gives you uh, an overview of how to use the controls, which is useful because it isn't easy. So as you can see, it gives you an overview of the lesson there. And also when you go into the lesson, it will uh, give you a uh, voiceover overview of how to do it as well. Adjust the throttle using only your left thumb. Move it forward and your copter will rise. Move it backward and your copter falls. So, try to match the height of my copter. Okay, so that was a brief, and all you've got to do for this one is move the left analog stick up and down lesson, uh, to level up down. your copter with. Bit. Ooh, wow, okay. I, I made a big mistake changing that sensitivity. Okay, right there. Because it's even harder than it was now. <laughs> So uh, I'll just go through this and then I'll go back and change the sensitivity. That's it. So far so good. So basically when you push up the uh, helicopter goes up but as soon as you let go of the analog stick it starts good. to fall Easy. again. So you have to hold the analog stick in the right place. Just a few more left. Yeah, I really need to change good. that sensitivity back. To make it lower and maybe that'll help, but not by much. Hold that position. So basically just to get okay, you used to the controls Use your and as thumb. I said they are quite wow, challenging so it's good that this training mode is here. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the menu and quickly change that setting and then I'll go back to a, one of the other training things. So back in the training menu I'll skip over that one which is just uh, basically using the rudder to rotate your helicopter left and right. I'll move on to this one, I'll show this because this has some bearing on the later training sessions if you want to call them that. You 
So this one, I'm going to skip the briefing, but basically you've got to tilt the copter using the right stick, and this is what you, where you tilt it from side to side, uh, rather than rotating it, which you would do with the left stick. So you've got to adjust the uh, copter to line up with the copter on the right, yours is the one on the left by the way, but what's interesting with this is, um, it doesn't actually look the same when you when you're trying to line them up so Good, luckily you get a guide of how best to do it Good, uh, but yeah so basically more. you can tilt the right stick in all directions to pivot the, uh, more the helicopter that. move forward a bit, no backwards a bit Bank back a little bit more right there see my, it's almost like a mirror image so that doesn't really help in the slightest yeah that's it well that didn't ch take much uh, so one more, okay, one more. Hold it. Yeah, so there you go. So that is particularly challenging. The the sort of movement, uh, rotating. It's not really rotating. What you say, pivoting, I suppose. Um, the helicopter because that also makes it move in whatever direction you're pivoting. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go to a different uh, lesson and show that a bit more in action now, with all the different controls. Beautiful! You passed training with a gold! Okay, so just to show what some of the other training things are, you've got uh, one for using the cyclic controls, that's the, the rotation or the pivoting I've just been talking about. Uh, then you do a bunch of them where you've just got to pop balloons, and then at the end of it all, which is what I'm going to go to now, uh, you do the barn, and uh, well, I'll show it you. This is your bonus training level. Can you hit the broadside of a barn? Go for the target and get the highest score you can. The faster you go. So yeah, the idea with this one then is you've got to crash into the barn. This is where you get to put all the controls for the helicopter into play. Except for there is the ability to fire bullets with the R2 button, but you can't do that in this particular one. You use them to hit targets in various modes that we'll get into in due course. So just to go over the controls again in this final training so mode, play, uh, up and down makes the helicopter go up and down, but also you can just let go of the analog stick and it'll drop down. Uh, left and right on the left stick, that was the left stick for up and down by the way, left and right on the stick also makes you rotate as you can see, and the other thing you can do is use the right stick as I've already shown to tilt the copter and as soon as you start tilting it, it starts moving. So the idea of this level is to crash into the barn yeah, and good. I got 27,000. The idea is to crash into the target uh, so I'll have another try. Um, the faster you go and the more accurate you are the more points you get basically. So I'll try and get a, a, a hit on target. You can also uh, patrol or move around the level in general uh, to have a look around. So for example there's a cow here um, which you can not crash into although it does have a target on the side I have tried that uh, and there's also a tractor going round and a farmhouse uh, so you can explore a little bit but there's not a lot of points so let's just get on with trying to crash into this barn again the uh, the tilt controls as I've already said very difficult to get accurate um, you just have to nudge them ever so slightly in the direction you want to go you did it you hit the broad side of the barn that's good for a barn. yeah I don't think I even did as well as the last go there so let's just try and get a hit on target and then I'll this move on. Jeez, that was kind of rude. Okay. Go on, hit the target, hit the target. No, I've missed Good it again. Uh, the camera is not great and also you feel like you're quite close to something and then um you don't you don't actually hit it. Um you don't think you, you don't go quite where you think you're going so uh it, it doing all this stuff in a, in a 3D space is hard, uh, there's no two ways about that and you'll see that as we get into the, the proper game modes, if I don't hit the target this time I'll just give up, oh what is going on now, okay, lost control completely and I've crashed into the ground, the ground uh, so I suppose I should try again, at least try and hit the barn uh, but yeah it, it's, it's a tough uh, thing to get to grips with to say the least it's all about controlling the speed and the angle of the the copter. Um, okay, so I'm sort of on target. Just ramp up the speed now. 
Yep, there we go, hit the target, I think. Did you notice a target painted on it no, apparently I didn't, but I still got 107,000 points, so let's just call it a day at that point and move on. So I got a score for that. Um, you can't. There is a high score table, as you can see there, I just got into it. Uh, and then when you've completed the training, you do get a rank as well based on the, the medals you got during the different training modes, training levels. Way to go. So there you go, that was my status. I got an overall rank of gold uh, from the playthrough I had before. Uh, and obviously just did a couple of example training modes there. So let's move on to the one player game, which you can do by pressing X. So you can choose different copters. Don't really know what the difference is between them. Um, I, 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 I suspect they're harder to control or something like that. So I'm going to stick with the rookie one. Uh, and then there's a variety of different uh, modes that you can choose on each level. So I'm currently on level one or stage one. If you push down, you can see that there's a stage two, a stage three, a stage four, a stage five, and a bonus level. Uh, none of which are accessible. They're not unlocked until you've completed stage one so you have to do all five levels on stage one before you can move on to stage two so uh, let's start with what should we start with landing that doesn't sound too difficult so let's do that first so on each stage you've got to reach a target score and you do that by completing whatever task they've asked you to do you get a briefing which I'm talking over now but you can guess what you've got to do here basically just land on the landing pad uh, you've got a certain amount of fuel and uh, that's about it for this one let's just have a quick look round very uh, unremarkable landscape the graphics overall pretty nicely done uh, pretty nice 3D you do get a bit of break up of some of the 3D objects when you fly near them sometimes but the overall graphics for the copter in particular are nicely done so let's get on and uh, try and land on this landing pad I'm going to take it as slowly as I can and try and land you so can see a shadow so you just try and land in the middle of it that looks pretty good let's go with that and there we go I've got 50,000 so that's completed that one uh, that was very easy and it's not it is going to get more difficult than that Bonus for unspent fuel as well. End up with a total score of 57,000. And that nice puts me top job. of the leaderboard. So I'll, I'll, board. I'll take How that and move on to the next level. So next up we've got level, shooting. Please. Again, I'll skip the briefing. Uh, you'll hear enough of that guy when I get things wrong. So the idea here is, as I mentioned, that with the R2 button you can fire bullets. Uh, so... The idea is to shoot the targets. Nice there we go, shot. that's one of them. Uh, most of them are behind these things, so I've got to navigate past. Bring your copter down a bit. At the moment I've got auto leveling on, uh, that's by default with it. it's within the, the game mode of whether you get it or not, which means when you do tilt to go forwards, um, once you take your finger off the analog stick, it does nice. um, it does level it up for you, which is <laughs> pretty good because otherwise you end up very much out of control at times so uh, I suppose I should shoot this one that's nearer first Missed it by that much. not doing very well here oh as I said controls very hard to get to grips with um, so oh it's just the slightest oh, nudge so on the analog close. stick and you go way further than you expect you might go um, so you have to be very very gentle with it I've been trying to shoot this thing for ages now let's just get a bit closer there we go we got it at last so let's move over to the other side try to keep your shadow within view that's too much throttle you can hear the commentary all the way through it's quite it gets quite annoying oh don't try this without training skids there we go, we've got that one. I should be able to shoot this one from a distance if we get the angle right. Let's get a bit closer because I'm not doing very well here. 
Uh, in terms of sound, very basic sound effects within the game. There is the music, uh, which is not that good either, and obviously a lot of commentary, which uh, is obviously trying to be humorous, but isn't very humorous for the most part and just annoying. So I've got to go back and land on the landing pad, it would appear as well. Let's go and do that. Bring your copter down a bit. No, oh, apparently that's not close enough. Come on then. There we go. At last. Okay, so hopefully that's going to be enough to have qualified. I don't really know how this works. I don't know what the target score was. 19,000. I don't know how it calculated that. But I don't think that was enough, I'm, I'm so I'm gonna have to proud. do it again. Yeah, your score Ugh. sucks, but you're still able to hold your head up high. It, it's amazing. I was terrible at that, so uh, let, let's try and be a bit quicker about it this time. Oh, you thought you had okay, that's it, one down. You? So you've obviously got to move it's around reasonably bottle. quickly to get these things. Ooh, that was close. Uh, that's not a it's so hard. It really is incredibly difficult to control this thing. I don't, I don't think the controls this, are particularly intuitive either. I feel like what would have been better was that to, to move forwards, um, you, you just you have to press a, a button over. rather than use the controls of the analog stick. Uh, I, yeah, it's just it's nice very difficult. Shot. But I'm getting this done a lot quicker than last time. So hopefully, if we can just get Try this get last one. facing the wrong way at the moment but just turn around pretty close to that so hopefully it won't take me too long to get it uh, sorry no points for hitting those nice there we go that's got that hit. done so let's just get There's back the to the, uh, in front of you. the landing pad down. easy on the throttle oh I've completely overshot okay, it fly forward and set it down come on Nearly there. Nearly there. There we go. Hopefully I've got enough points this time. I don't know how it calculates the score because you only start off with like 5,000 points or something from the shooting. So yeah, I've beaten the 25,000 target this time at least. So let's move on. You're on the board. Way to go. Take Next up we've got the slalom and to do this one you've got to fly between the goalposts uh, and this, this is where level, it gets really you tricky. Fly from goal post to goal post as fast as you can. You'll... So basically you have to keep moving. It's only the yellow goalposts, I've learnt that from playing it before. So all you have to do is fly through the goalposts and then turn around and fly through the opposite one. But no, straight away <laughs> I've crashed straight into the post. Uh, it, I felt like I was going through it then, uh, but obviously I wasn't. So you've got to keep pretty good height and also navigate his, your way through the posts. Nope, you missed it. Try again. That's yeah, close, but there we go. I've got the first one. So you get 3,000 for each post you've gone through, and the target score is 25,000. So you've you've got 90 seconds to do it and I've already used 20 seconds of that so yeah it's pretty hard this uh, you do get a time bonus if you get between the posts quite quickly uh, I think it's under 10 seconds so I think you need to get at least a couple of those to succeed because basically you've got to do, do it 8 times or 9 times actually to get uh, enough points to qualify so it's not going too badly at the moment. I've only got, what, 30 seconds left? Oh, I'm going to hit the post. No, I'm not. I managed to make me do shit around it. What have I got now? 15, 18,000. 20 seconds to go. I need three more so you can do it in less than like well, like five or six seconds probably is the best you can do it in if you've really got to your eye in and the copter tilted forward so I need one more and I've got two seconds to do it so I'm gonna fail okay so I'll do that again 
that's annoying oh actually I've got 25,000 because I got a bonus for extended time so I've just managed to do it that's nice because you didn't really want to see me have to do it with all nope, that again sorry, but that's very tight and, and it's that, only from practicing it a few times when I've played before okay, that uh, I know that you really have to go full pelt between those posts over and over again to do it so let's move on to what I think is the final level of round one stage one whatever you want to call it which is the target and all you've really got to do here is fly through, through this gap your copter on the pad the scoring for this level is based on how accurate and fast you are through the ring okay so let's give it a go so all you've really got to do is fly through this and not oh, hit the edges is this, thing on? this first target level is easy just fly forward through the ring now the landing pad hits that car yeah I didn't do very well there did okay, I just fly forward and set it oh. down Just land on the landing pad and hope I've got enough points. Let's see how it goes. I don't know what the bonus points are again, so yeah, well I've managed to do it for whatever reason, whether it's the speed, I think it was the speed that really boosted my score up there, and I, I did it now, easily in the end. So the great. I like how the uh, the names on the high score table there are the Greek gods uh, because you're in a kind of Greek sort of area. Are they the Greek ones or the Roman ones? I always get mixed up. I think they're the Greek ones. Uh, so what have we got next? Is that all of them? Oh no, I forgot to do hover as well. Sorry, I forgot about that. So hover. For this level, you need to hover your copter over the center drain. Just take off, fly over the drain, and try to hover your copter. To get a score for hovering, you must stay over the drain without touching the ground. After you get a score for hovering your copter, head for the landing pad. The steadier the hover, the more point. You get the idea, he's described it better than I could. So you've got to hover over this drain in the middle for a certain amount of time. Uh, and this is really hard because right, you have to uh, hover over the you have to stay still. Stay in quite long and try so you've again. got to nudge the, the copter into the right place. Uh, without building up too much speed that you pass right, over the target hover over the drain. there we go and then you've got to hover oh, at the right the height as well I think nearly there we just get a little nudge forward all right just fly forward and hover over the drain nearly there nearly there okay now hold it got to keep it in that green zone oh, there, I've done it I've done enough okay whatever it was I've done enough um, so let's just land on this target oh missed it close but you missed try again oh it's, it's just really annoying this game there we go okay so I did it I don't know if that's enough points or not again it'll work it out when it adds all the extra stuff on at the end yeah no I didn't do it I didn't quite that would have done the do it so let's try again Tough luck, bucko. For this. let's try and do it as quickly as possible uh, yeah in summary I could always already tell you what my feelings are about this game is it's just way too difficult and it's not really any fun as a result right, uh, the control the of the copter is just so erratic Hold it. nearly there yeah. nearly there okay I've got That's much more up. points there so I'll definitely qualify this time um, I think if you've got a control with really good analog sticks it might be easier the one I'm using hasn't particularly so they're a bit stiff and that can make it quite difficult so just land in here that'll be that bit done as well so comfortably qualified and that is all the five levels for the first difficulty level completed now 35,000 yeah, okay the top so uh, it's not the I think that's it and it'll go back to yeah okay so it's now gone to the next stage which is landing level two uh, and the main thing it does is it ups hey, the score required, you can see it's 55,000 now. So I'll just do this one, but then I think I've seen enough of this mode, I'm just going to show the free fly mode and then call it a day, because uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this game, it's very fiddly, very hard to control, 
uh, as I say, if you've got a really good controller and a lot of patience, That's then is this even the right place to land? I don't even know. Let's see what happens when Just I land. Just a reminder, um, copter and cactus. No, Bad that's not the right. Oh, okay, Cats it's got the arrow. Left. Okay, so you've got to land on three um, to complete this stage, I guess. Bring your copter down a bit. Okay, just fly forward and set it down. Try to keep your shadow within view. And then on you go. That'll do. Let's That's try one. that. How about the next one? The landing pad's on your left. It's a good job you've got these uh, safety balls, if you like, on the end of All these right, rods on, on the helicopter. Okay, let's see if I'm dropping a bit more central on this one. Two down, one yeah, 16,000, but you've got to get 55,000, so it's not looking good. I'm not going to play this again, whether I succeed or not, because uh, I'm already quite frustrated with the game. Okay, just fly forward and set it down. It's a nice idea. Oh no, see, missed. Two, um, nice idea, there's lots of different game modes. There's a two-player mode in it as well, which might be interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's really, really, really hard. Good. Set it down gently. That'll do. Okay, so I've got like 40,000. Is that going to be enough? No, 48,000. Oh well, never mind. Uh, let's score. quit out so of that. So yeah, I mean, it's quite well implemented. The physics are pretty good in it. It's just the control of the copter that is really challenging and. I don't really think I've got the patience to uh, persevere with it anymore. I will just show that there's a kind of free fly mode as well. So yeah, I've made it onto level two so I could play any of those uh, options on that one as well if I wanted to, uh, but I don't want to. I'm just gonna go back and take a look at free flight. Uh, again, you can pick a copter, uh, there's various things you can choose barn theme park vacant lot oh wow there's loads look there's uh, oh, okay these aren't all unlocked yet but there's a castle it's a pond tire park ruins but I'm gonna choose the theme park because I like theme parks so let's take a look at this so here we go I'm in the theme park and it's free flight so I guess I can do what I like uh, there's some balloons to pop by the looks of it there's a big door there I don't know if I can fly through that I've not really played this mode before and I can't remember if it said in the instructions what you can and can't do in the free flight mode Come on, um, shooting, so Rambo. oh control is just so difficult I'm assuming if I hit that I'm just gonna crash into it What's really going on? I'm not really moving forward much. Should we go over your objective again? Yeah, we probably should go over the objectives, I suppose. I'm guessing I've got to shoot these balloons. Uh, that's not a target. Okay. Yeah, so I've got to shoot the balloons. I don't know how many. It's not really free flight, is it, if you've got an objective? I can fly into the balloons as well. Yeah, and then there's the stuff you're supposed to be shooting. Sorry, no points for hitting those. Uh, that's not a target. It's not a target, apparently. Yeah. Oh, unless, unless it was something I shot in the background. To be uh, that's not a so target. the aim of this just seems to be to shoot balloons, which is really quite dull. There's a roller coaster in the background there. Not a very good one. Maybe you should switch to decal. Okay. Sorry, no points for hitting those. Yeah, and then there's the stuff you're supposed to be shooting at. I mean, what is going on here? Hey, let's talk about an itchy trigger finger. Uh, I'm quite bored. Doesn't seem to be anything to do other than shoot the. Uh, oh no, I've crashed into the hamburger. It doesn't seem to be anything to do other than shoot the balloons. Uh, 
Um, so I think I'm going to call it a day at that point because it's quite boring. In fact, that's just the one thing you can do, which I haven't shown, is you can actually invert the helicopter. Um, let's give that a try before I call it a day. So if you tilt this control, the right stick, uh, far enough, eventually the, the helicopter will invert and then you can keep it hovering but you have to invert the up and down as well so let's give this a go you do uh, it, won't, it won't actually flip over level, don't you? well that's not very good is it Ooh. very close to those objects there as you can see they kind of cut up a bit yeah it won't, it won't let me flip it over I don't know why maybe it's a speed thing or something did you forget which button to fire with? But yeah, I'm, I'm quite bored with this now. I don't even care. Strange. Okay, yeah. At that point, um, let's call it a day, I think. Let's go to next. Let's just see what this does. Okay, we're going to the pond now. Well, let's have a quick look at this while I round up my thoughts about this game. Is it a game? I mean, you've got scores, so I guess it's got a high school challenge. It's more of a simulation. Oh, okay, I'm flying a dragonfly now. That was unexpected. Oh, that's a nice touch. I mean, I'm not going to do anything with it, but... It's pleasant. There's plenty of depth in the game in terms of different options, uh, modes, challenges, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it's all a bit uh, annoying because of the controls being so... Uh, twitchy so um, yeah I'm not going to be keeping this one it's not really worth a great deal of money so I'm not going to be making any money from it either but um, that's fine I'll, I, it cost me a pound so I'll probably get that pound back when I sell it uh, if you've got any thoughts or you've played this uh, then let me know in the video comments and I think that will do because uh, well I don't know what I'm doing now oh, I've got some points for 360 rotation there or something there's a fish uh, who knows what's really going on but uh, I have had enough, so let's call it a day at that point. Right then, so as I said at the beginning of the video, that was the last of 20 games that I picked out of my collection to review, and I've now picked another 20 games to review in the future videos in this series, so let's take a look at those 20 games. As you can see, there's a mixed bag again, there's some Commodore 64 games, and again, the majority of the games I've picked are Commodore 64 ones. There's also some Mega Drive, some PS1 and PS2. I've also brought in some GameCube games, Xbox, Sega Master System, and a couple of Atari 2600 cartridges. So, let's see which game out of those 20 gets drawn out at random for the next game for me to review and plenty to choose from obviously so let's see what I draw out and the first game I'm going to be playing next time around is Shanghai Warriors that's a Commodore 64 game so join me for that in the near future thanks very much for watching this video see you next time